The difference mat effect is found under the keying category, and this is a very specific type of keying effect for isolating the subject of footage, but it works in very specific scenarios. Here I have footage of a tennis ball being dropped in slow motion and hit by a tennis racket, but it's shot with a camera that was locked off, likely on a tripod. So there's no camera movement whatsoever, meaning the background does not change. So if I go to this first frame, I can consider this a clean plate for my background. So I'm gonna right click on my footage and go to time and say freeze frame. Now that frame will not change and I'm going to rename this clean plate. Then I'll duplicate this footage and call this subject, right click and disable time remapping so that I have my footage again. I'll turn off my clean plates visibility and then apply the difference mat to the subject. Under the controls, it defaults to showing me the final output, meaning the keyed out result, but I need to choose a difference layer. It's just using the original layer as that difference mat, but I'm gonna choose my clean plate, and immediately I'm left with just my tennis ball and a tennis racket hitting that ball, and it's doing a really nice job. If I turn on my transparency grid, we can see some matting issues, but it's removing that background. And let me explain to you exactly what's happening here. If I just turn off difference mat for a second and turn my clean plate back on and go back to the first frame where the subject and clean plate are identical, I'll go into my mode and change this from normal down to difference, which is a little bit past the halfway point. My whole frame goes completely black. What this means is that there is no difference between these two layers at this point. But as soon as I scrub forward in time, any pixel that is different on this layer compared to what's below it will show through. Everything that's the same will remain completely black. So I've basically just recreated the exact same effect, but without transparency. So using that blending mode just turns all of the pixels that are the same from frame to frame to be pure black. But using that same kind of logic, if I turn this back to normal, turn my difference mat on and my clean plate off, I'm able to isolate the subject and remove the background. Now let's look at some other controls we have access to. Obviously we have if layer size differ, then we can change this from center to stretch to fit. But if you're using this technique, then you really want both your subject and clean plate to be from the same footage anyway, so they should be the same size. Next we have three controls to kind of refine this mat. Matching tolerance, matching softness, and blur before difference. So I'll zoom in here nice and close so we can see that mat and turn up the matching tolerance a little bit. And you can see that that eats away at my mat. I don't really wanna do that because I'm really losing a lot of my tennis racket. So I'm gonna leave that at its default. I could make this all softer by turning up the matching softness, but again, that makes everything disappear. So maybe I'll turn the matching tolerance down a little bit and the matching softness as well. Finally, we have blur before difference. And this is just going to blur out the mat prior to applying the actual difference key. So that's a way that you can clean it up a little bit. Now, like I said, this is for very specific use cases, and obviously I couldn't really composite this on top of a different, brighter colored background unless I did a lot more refining to it, but that is how you use the difference matte effect to isolate a subject from a clean plate background. And I wanna point something else out. If I go into my second comp here, I have this ballerina dancing across the floor. I don't have a single frame that works as a clean plate background, but if I just duplicate this layer and rename it clean plate, and I'll isolate just the ballerina dancer right here on this frame and turn that to subtract. So this is what I've just done. And then I'll pre-compose this with Control Shift C or Command Shift C on a Mac, and we can leave it named clean plate move all of the attributes and click OK. I'll go into that pre-comp, right click and again say time freeze frame. Then I'll duplicate this layer, press U to bring up the keyframes and then dial this back to where the ballerina is on the other side of the frame and move my mask over to that side. Now between those two layers, I've created a clean plate from this footage. So let's jump back into the ballet comp, turn that layer's visibility off and the original source footage back on put the difference mat effect onto that footage, change my difference layer to my clean plate, and we're sort of isolating the ballerina. However, because there are so many similar tones in what the ballerina is wearing to the background, as well as the dancer's skin color through these tights, there isn't enough difference between the foreground and background for this to really work. If I turn my transparency grid on, you can see that her tutu is basically completely transparent, 
a lot of her skin is seeping through, and this technique really doesn't work that well for this specific clip. So that's why I say that the difference mat technique has a very specific application and only works with very specific types of footage, but it's still definitely worth knowing about. That's everything you need to know about difference mat. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.